Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is Friday. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you to each and every one of you for joining us on the programme, our ever-growing audience. Uh, and on this Friday, it's back to domestic issues for Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson to talk about. And here's what's on the menu. Lots to talk about. Hamilton Celtic is the early kickoff. Neil Lennon was talking today ahead of that match, not only about the football, but he had his say on the sickening abuse towards Scott Brown, and he uh, opened it up to uh, the wider sense of social media, which is quite simply that you know I think people have to have a responsibility for their actions and it needs to be policed more and there's an education to stop some of this online abuse. Yeah, it's becoming ridiculous. Look, this abuse has been happening for, for years, but obviously it's been highlighted now by social media. But these, these idiots keep getting away with it, Peter. I think it's going to be difficult to police, but we need to try and do something to stop it. Because uh, some of the things that are getting said about current footballers, about ex-footballers, um, has been nothing short of ridiculous. It's... Uh, it's a platform that's made easy for guys to go on and, and do it, which um, is not right. You yourself avoid it. Now, we joke about it, but you avoid it because, quite simply, you had the abuse when you were a, a, a youngster. You had it when you were the captain of Rangers and Scotland. And I think you avoid it because you don't think, well, I don't want to give them a platform just to have a free-for-all. Yeah, look, I, I still suffer it. It's not as bad, don't get me wrong, as during my... Certainly my Rangers career. Um, I still get it every now and then, which is no nice. But as you get older, you, you mature a bit and you, you try and walk away from it. You know what I mean? But back in the day, it was difficult for me at times when you're walking down the, the, the street with your kids and you're, you're getting shouted abuse at, which is no nice. I don't think it's right. On a pitch, Peter, I never minded it. Um, whether I was getting bowled at or sworn at or whatever you want to call it, that was part of the football. But off the pitch, um, I just didn't enjoy it. It's part of the part of the game that I, I just it, it frustrated me. Um, at times, I never reacted in the right way. But as I say, as you get older, you tend to try and walk away from it now. Yeah, Ruffy, no such problems for you because you're still operating your Nokia 3210. <laughs> it doesn't have any pictures on it. You don't even know what the internet is at times. No, but I think uh, the younger generation, particularly the younger footballers who are, uh, have to be educated on it, you know, we saw a lot of mishaps happening just because of just a wee bit of fun and a night out or whatever. And uh, these things will come back. And I think that, I think the, the clubs now are beginning to counsel the, the younger players to tell them, look, this is what you have to do. Just stay away from it as much as you can. Yeah, uh, of course, Neil Lennon mentioned the fact that, you know, in these modern times, some people think it's OK to put abuse out there. I think that sometimes it makes young ones think that it's all right. You know, and it's not. And again, we are having people in authority and football authorities and, and players of the highest caliber asking social media networks to clamp down on it it has to stop because there's no accountability or responsibility to these individuals to basically put out on a public forum what they want to say you know we all live in a de democracy but there has to be a line drawn somewhere because it's against the law it's illegal and the, these platforms allow this illegality to happen Yep, moving on to the football itself. Hamilton against Celtic is the early kickoff. All the Premiership fixtures taking place on the Saturday. Will Hamilton put a spoke in the works um, with regards to Celtic? They're unbeaten this season. Uh, no, I can't see it. I think Celtic will be full of confidence after the old fun performance and obviously getting the three points. Um, and look, Hamilton will try and make it difficult. 
for Celtic, but I think Celtic have, uh, will have far too much quality and I can only see Celtic winning this game. Yeah, I think so as well. I think it might be a wee bit of a struggle early on getting the, the surface. You know, a lot of people, players have to get their head round playing in it. But I, I agree with Barry. I think there is, you know, too much quality in that Celtic side. It depends how much Neil tampers with it. He might go along give, introducing some players that have to been playing. But I think in the end of the day, they'll win 2 nothing. Yeah, I, I, and the one thing I would say, you know, we're looking at the, uh, the goals for column. They've scored 17 goals, conceded just three. The mainstay of that, the man who's gathering all the plaudits, Barry, is Odson Edouard, scoring for France under 21s on two occasions. Um, he really looks the real deal. You, you think he's going to be even better than what's gone before? Yeah, I think he's got the potential to be better than Dembele. Um, that, that's my, my opinion. It might differ for other people's, but when he's on top of his game, Peter, he's a real handful. Um, and one-on-one, -on -one, you always fancy him scoring. Um, he can look lazy at times, but that's just his mannerisms. But when he's on fire, he's a top striker. OK, uh, from Hamilton against mm. Celtic to Rangers, their match, uh, of course, against Livingston. But prior to the game, Stephen Gerrard certainly not happy with the SFA and the Scotland manager in particular um, because Ryan Jack has picked up uh, an injury uh, that he believes was sustained uh, uh, by being overtrained with the international squad. He's a doubt for the weekend. Um, unfortunately, he was asked to do uh, an 11k session uh, two days after the North Firm, which made his knee flare up. So um, we've had to manage him. Um, he's he's had to have a couple of procedures since. Um, he done a light session with the physio today, and we're hoping to get him into training for tomorrow. Well, it's fair to say, Rafi, he had the injury before he went uh, on mm -hmm. international duty. Yeah, it's a tough one to call, you know, because obviously the players went there uh, hoping that he might get picked. So he's going to put in a fair shift to impress Stevie Clark. So anything he's asked to do, he's going to do it, you know, and it's just unfortunate that it's flared up. It's a tough one. But teams like Rangers and Celtic have loads of players away in international duty. You know, something's going to happen, whether it's at training or whether it's during the game. So it's just part and parcel of the job now. I think that's the reason that a lot of clubs don't like the players going away in international football if they're carrying a wee bit of an injury. Yeah, nice to see uh, Gary Holt back after that health scare uh, in the dugout for Livingston. Of course, they're just a point behind Rangers. Two wins, two draws for Livy this season. It's been a great start to the season, but if they're going to do something, they might have to do it against a man who's been signed for £7 million by Rangers. Ryan Kent says he's itching to get in there, get started and repay some of that fee. I think I just gotta go and deliver again and, and more. Um, you know, I have ambitions as a as a footballer to get to get to the highest level, and you know that's what I, what I want to do. So, I, you know, I know the expectancy of of me as a footballer and what I need to go and do. Well, if there's excitement around the likes of Alfredo Morelos last season, uh, certainly Ryan Kent was hogging the headlines as well. How big a star do you think he could become for Rangers? Yeah, I think yeah, again. Um, he's got huge potential. He's, he's shown that to the Rangers management team, the Rangers fans and, and Scottish football fans last year. I thought he was Rangers' top player, certainly in the big games he produced. And you listen to him talk, I, I quite like people who believe in their ability. He certainly does. And I think it's going to be a huge shining for Rangers. Um, he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders, obviously with a transfer fee. But I think he's the type of lad who can handle the pressures. Um, a, a big fees um, and you just hope he comes up here and he produces the form he did last season Who wins this one? Well Rangers for me Rangers need to bounce back it's, there's no doubt <clears> in my mind about that and I'm sure they will I'm sure they'll come flying out the traps and they'll get the one that's needed I think it would be a shock uh, if Lovison took anything out of this game uh, I think Rangers will be too strong eventually and I, I think Rangers will win 3 nothing. OK, uh, confidence in our camp here. Uh, coming up after we announce our quiz winner, we'll look at the likes of Aberdeen, the Hearts, Hibs, Kilmarnock. Uh, which manager is under the most pressure in the Premiership this season? A question we'll be putting to our two panellists after we reveal the winner of this week's quiz.
Well done to Eddie Higgins, of course. We were giving you clues this week to Arsenal against Manchester United in 1979. It was a fantastic FA Cup final. No point looking at Barry. He wasn't here. <laughs> Nobody had heard of Barry Ferguson in 1979. Yeah, a year old. Oh, were you a year old? Were you? a year old. Oh, there you are. Still in the pram. Yeah. Yeah, must have been. Yeah, OK. And from yourself, Ruffy, 79, it was a great cup final. Uh, Alan Sunderland was, scored the winner. It was fantastic. End-to-end yeah, -end stuff. You know, uh, the goalie took a wee bit of stick with the winner. Yeah. Big South you African. You weren't happy with Gary Bailey, were you? Yeah, he, he sort of came out and flapped at it a wee bit. Yeah. And, uh, but he was a good big goalkeeper. But to lose it like that, you know, it was a tremendous game. And we spoke about Liam Brady, who absolutely just controlled the whole game from start to finish. Yeah. He had a brilliant left peg on him. Uh, OK, from the winner of the quiz, here's how it looks over the weekend. We've talked about Celtic and Rangers. Hamilton, Celtic, the early kickoff. Uh, of course, Aberdeen, St Johnston, Hearts, Motherwell, Kilmarnock, Hibs, the aforementioned Rangers, Livingston and Ross County against St Mirren. So let's talk Kelly. Uh, of course, uh, the managers come in for a fair bit of flack on this one, Barry, because Kurt Broadfoot had a, a little shot across his broadside um, and the manager says, well, I'm going to stick to my training here you know there's been a few people who uh, certainly haven't been happy with it and I'm just hearing that um, of course um, Jamie McDonald the goalkeeper uh, has been loaned out to Alava so clearly he's starting to clear out some of the people that really performed for Steve Clark last season yeah he's um, he, he's obviously brought a few of his own players in um, look a new manager comes in he's got his own way of working some people enjoy it some people won't but listen, he, he's a man in charge. If he feels it's right to do certain training regimes, you've got to stick to it. And if you don't like it, well, it seems to me that you, you need to go. Yeah, um, listen, Kelly, I won just once <coughs> in the league this season. Um, I have to say, I had him down as my favourite yep. uh, for the sack race. There's somebody coming right up on his shoulder at the moment, but we'll get to him in a minute. Um, but nevertheless, <clears throat> I also have in this three-horse race, Paul Heckingbottom, who will be in the opposite dugout um, because Hibs have been far from impressive. Yeah, the, the, I, I'm surprised because <coughs> they have got a bit of quality in that team, Peter. Uh, obviously, the main guy, Scott Allen, but to me, he's playing out of position. Um, I think centrally, he makes a big difference. So he, he'll be under pressure as well. Hibs are a big club. They've got high expectations. Yeah. Not just the board, but the, the supporters there. And then... Um, they don't seem happy, so yeah. they'll need to start getting results soon. Um, it, it, Hecking Bottom comes out with what I call the classic Alex McLeish uh, line ahead of some games when he was the Rangers manager. It's time to start winning ugly. I always, I always, I always get worried about that. Hibs have conceded eleven goals. Yeah. It doesn't take a rocket scientist yeah. to work out what the problem is. It is. It's defensively, you know, and I, I think they're very. Good players in midfield, Scott Allen and Malin. Good technical players. Not got a lot of steel about them. And if you look at, I think it was a Motherwell game, the Motherwell midfield were just brushing them aside. And uh, that, that for me, is the weakness. There's no like strength in that midfield. And uh, people are just running over but the top of them. If you've got two players like that, you try and build your team round about it. Yeah. But they don't. I've watched them and they oh, go. No, at times they're going that. long and I'm thinking... Was it the Motherwell game? The Motherwell game. Yeah. And, and I didn't like uh, Scott Allen just left of centre when I thought he should be slap bang in the middle with runners around him. Well, if you've got Scott Allen and, and Malin, who for me are technically very good players, you yeah. try and build round about that with guys who can get about players and a bit of steel about them. Um, but look, they're going through a tough time. They'll need to start winning soon. Yeah, and of course the managers changed the team, and and certainly the attitude around Easter Road is different, Ruffy. When when yeah. Neil when Neil when Alan Stubbs was there, he brought that mentality. I always feel as if if you've got managers that have played at the top level, uh, and and understand the mentality of big clubs, Stubbs brought it to Hibs. Neil Lennon carried it on, but Neil Lennon was not accepting draws anywhere. He would absolutely you know, batter his players for draws when he knew they should have won. And he also had that mentality that he wanted to take them on to another level. I don't see... I think we've gone backwards. No, I think the worst thing of the lot is that uh, I don't think the fans have bought into uh, what the manager's trying to do. I think when Neil Lennon was there, the fans definitely bought into everything. They bought into the rows. They bought into I'm having a go at the players. They bought into obviously the style of play and obviously the success they had. I don't think they bought in to anything that this new manager's given. I don't think he's that kind of manager that wants to be part of the part of the fans. 
where Neil was a fans manager. Yeah. But Under Alan Stubbs and certainly Neil Lennon, they were good to watch. Going forward, they were exciting. Listen, they leaked some goals, but you always knew that they were um, they were capable of scoring goals at the other end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not a bad midfield at that time as well with Alan McGeoch and John McGinn. Um, OK, if we're uh, worried about what's happening at Hibs, we're even more worried about what's happening at Hearts. But first and foremost, uh, as ever, I'm a huge fan of the Hearts owner, Anne Budge, and what she does there to try and make it not only a family <clears> club, but certainly her morals are passed down to the club as well. She likes it to be run with uh, you know, a, a form of decency, especially if you're inside Tynecastle and that's why uh, there's an indefinite ban for two fans who were guilty of sectarian and racist abuse. Here's a statement from uh, Hearts. The club can confirm that two individuals have been banned from the stadium indefinitely for the use of racist and sectarian language. As per the club's unacceptable conduct policy, any person engaging in unacceptable conduct of this nature will be the subject of an investigation which in this case has resulted in indefinite bans from Tyne <coughs> Castle Park. Well done. Once again, she's mm. not somebody that can be accused of just skirting around the issue. She's dealing with it head on. Yeah, and it's not the first time. Uh, I think Hearts, more than anybody, uh, have been very active in coming down in anything that brings the club name into strain. And she has really, really been at the forefront of this. And, and the more clubs that do things like this, the, the more supporters will have to watch what they're doing at games. OK, uh, as for Hearts on the field of play, it's not good. They've only had four wins in 2019 uh, and it's not been a great start to the season. Booed with a 2-2 draw against Hamilton. Suddenly, he, for me, is just edging ahead of Alessio in the sack race here. Uh, this could be a very difficult couple of weeks for Craig Levine. Yeah, look, he's an experienced manager. He'll know he's under pressure to get results. Um, <coughs> obviously, the, fa uh, the Hearts fans are not happy. He'll know that, so it's important they try and get wins and wins quickly. But I don't think they'll do it against <coughs> Muddle. I think Muddle, I've just got a funny feeling, feeling that Muddle can go to Tynecastle. And certainly the first 15, 20 minutes, if they keep that crowd quiet, then I think Hearts are in for a difficult afternoon. Yeah, uh, I think you sometimes, Barry, are guilty of sitting too near Ruffy, and that's where mispronunciation comes, you know, um, because certainly the Farts fans hope they don't turn up because that'll just be just be a rotten game for everybody, Ruffy. If there's a guy who can make a mistake, it's Ruffy. But as soon as you did it, I thought, now will I let that go or will I hammer him for that? <laughs> Anyway, Ruffy, <laughs> the mother will have signed um, Bevis Mugabe. Now, not a really good name uh, at the moment, but I'm sure he's uh, got qualities that will fit right in uh, at Fir Park. Uh, Stephen Robinson said with the injury to Dunn, had to get him in there mm -hmm. to try and bolster them. Well, it just shows you how, how these managers have to have contacts everywhere, you know, because obviously we've never heard of this guy and... Uh, He's obviously had good reports about him, and he'll probably throw him right in at the deep end. Yeah, it's not quite the worst name. I think it's the association with the, mm -hmm. the second part, McGabby. It's not quite the worst name um, out there of all the, the players that we've put, we'll put, put, we'll put together a list on social media. Don't go no for way. it, Ruffy. By the way, are you going for Hearts or Motherwell to win? I'm going to go for Craig Levine to get a, a wee rubber of the green. I'm going to get them 2 1 winners. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you've gone for them 2-1. Did you go for them 2-1 in the actual predictions? Yes, I certainly uh, yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, did. OK, uh, just got to keep keep your right, Ruffy. Aberdeen against St Johnston. Is this one of those days, Barry, where Stevie May suddenly comes back, scores a hat-trick against uh, you know a team where he really he just didn't have his shooting boots on? Yeah, I was surprised he didn't do as well up there. Um, I always liked him. For some odd reason, he struggled at Aberdeen. So he's back home where it all started and I'm, I'm sure he'll, he'll get goals for St Johnson but I can't see it on Saturday. I think Aberdeen will win this game pretty easily. Yeah, disappointed. Um, uh, well, I feel uh, gutted for um, Scott Wright. He's out for the season, cruciate ligament. You know, I mean, there's nothing worse, Ruffy. A young guy, 22 years of age, you want him to do well, go back to Aberdeen and really hit the ground running. Yeah, it's the worst injury uh, when you hear somebody's got a cruciate. You know, it's... It's not just the, what he's got to deal with just now. It's can he come back and be the player that he was before he got it? I hope he does, because I think he's got bags of abundance, bags of skill. He's fantastic. Tried to get him at Partick Thistle before he went to Dundee yeah. on loan. 
So, yep, uh, it's a tragedy for a young player like that. Who wins? Aberdeen for me, 2-0. 2-0 Aberdeen. OK, confidence there. Um, as far as Ross County, St Mirren, um, I haven't, I've tipped St Mirren to go down it, which is amazing when you consider um, Jim Goodwin in charge there. But uh, I think Ross County uh, at home is going to be a difficult one for them. I think this is a kind of a game where Jim Goodwin will be saying to his players, this is the team that we could be contesting to stay in the division at the end of the season. No, I think Jim Goodwin's brought in some good players, uh, a couple of players away in under-21 duty, so I think they'll get the benefit of that. And they have been a lot better than what they were at the start of the season, so I think they'll be good enough to go up there and get a draw. I think he'll be his first one. Yeah. Yep. OK, there you are. A bit of confidence for you. Um, Jim will no doubt be delighted with that prediction from Barry. Just a couple of people I want to mention before we finish off. Barry, Billy Gilmore, four-year deal at Chelsea. That's fantastic news for the young lad. Yeah, but it just shows that he's impressing uh, the main man there, Frank Lampard. Um, I, I've said, listen, he's got all the ability in the world, this young kid. Uh, if he keeps progressing, I'm sure he'll be in that Chelsea first team soon and in your national team. Yeah. And the final thing I'd like to say is uh, good luck to Chris Doolan. He's having a testimonial at Fairhill, 4 o'clock on Sunday. It's a Partick Thistle Legends team against the Celtic Legends 11 as well. Uh, I think we're now starting to use the word leg <laughs> legends a, a little bit liberally, Ruffy. I mean, if, the, if it was legends, you'd be in goal, surely. No, I was asked if I wanted to play. Yeah? Uh, yeah, uh, but I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit old for that now. But uh, he was there 10 years. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's not a lot of players, you know, are at clubs modern day now at 10 years, so he deserves it. Yeah, just uh, on the footnote to uh, Scotland, it's been a, a difficult uh, two games for Scotland trying to make it to Euro 2020. I did mention earlier in the week that we had a photograph which shows you the difference between the team that Ruffy played in and the teams that we have now. And if you look at that side, I think well, like, this picture only features 10 players in it, but it's significant. Ruffy obviously won the League Cup with uh, Partick Thistle. There's a three-time European Cup winner in Kenny Dalglish. Similar, Alan Hansen. Frankie Gary played in a, a European Cup final um, and, of course, was a top player for Leeds United in Nottingham Forest. Uh, Alan Evans won the European Cup with Aston Villa. Gordon Strachan, the Cup Winners' Cup with uh, uh, Aberdeen. And then John Robertson, a two-time European Cup winner with Nottingham Forest. Soonest, three times with Liverpool. Alan Brazil and John Wark, UEFA Cup winners with Ipswich Town. Uh, I mean, it just gives you a real indication. I think John Wark also with Liverpool in the European Cup. Just gives you an indication of the strength we had at that time, Ruffy. Yeah, and the 11th player was Stevie Archibald, who was playing with Barcelona. Yeah. Well, that sums so, <laughs> I have to, I have to tell you, that, sum, that sums it up then. That just shows you good the calibre. It's a fantastic mm -hmm. squad. I mean, great. Good strip. The good strip. Oh, oh it's I a good strip that. as well, actually. I like your head socks. What like was that. your favourite uh, strip? Um, well, I played in a few bad ones. Yeah. Um, Howlers. Uh, I can't even remember. Yeah. My, uh, strangely enough, even although, you know, I still, the Argentina one is my favourite, Ruffy. Mm. I, still I, I, li I liked the, the World Cup one before that, the sort of a Dennis Law, Jim Baxter. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the round neck with the big, the big badge. Yeah, OK. There you are. It's a generational thing then. Uh, thanks to Ruffy and to Barry Ferguson. Don't forget, you can follow us across all social media. Uh, we are building uh, an ever-growing football family who want to read about football right across the world. You can actually get the app uh, and if you download the app you'll get all the news and you've got the unique video at your fingertips where you can watch the show till your heart's content. News coming up shortly of our podcast as well. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for Ruffy, to Barry and from myself, Peter Martin. Thanks again. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.